Hello lovelies, in this video we're going to be looking at the nitrogen cycle, where plants get nitrogen from, where it goes to and how it cycles through systems. There is quite a lot to pay attention to here, so once you finish this video, if you want to make sure that you understand everything fully, then over my website there is a set of multiple choice questions for you to try. Okay, so we're looking at the nitrogen cycle today, which you need to look at in detail for some exam boards, and it links to things we've been talking about in terms of decay and breakdown, and the bit about the carbon cycle as well. So nitrogen is an essential nutrient. Without it, animals and plants can't make amino acids or DNA, because those molecules both contain nitrogen. So in order to make amino acids in order to make proteins or make um, DNA molecules, we need nitrogen in some form. Trapped in another chemical is fine as long as we can take it and use it in reactions to make these two molecules, which are essential for life because we need them for growth, repair, and for cell division. Now, most nitrogen that's present on the planet is actually found as nitrogen gas in the atmosphere. So in the air around us, which is about 70% nitrogen, a bit more than 70% nitrogen, there's a lot of it, but it's very unreactive. So it's it's not easy to just absorb that nitrogen gas from the air. And so plants have to get it into, it into their systems in a different way in order to start using them to make protein. And it starts with the plants because remember they are producers. So they are the ones that are producing these molecules, amino acids, for the first time out of elements that they can get from the environment. So they use the light energy, they use the process of photosynthesis to make sugars, and then we're going to combine those sugars with nitrogen to make amino acids, for example. So they are the ones that get these molecules into the food chain. Plants can't just absorb nitrogen gas in the same way they absorb oxygen and carbon dioxide um, through their leaves. It just doesn't, that's not how this works, and it wouldn't, it'd be very difficult to make reactions happen at the same time. So they have to absorb it as nitrate or nitrates from the soil. Nitrate meaning it's involving oxygen. So it's nitrogen combined with oxygen compounds from the soil. And so nitrates are one of these mineral ions we talk about being absorbed from the soil through active transport. So nitrates are very important. They're, the amount of nitrogen in the soil or the nitrate in the soil that plants have access to determines how well they grow. And they use active transport and take it in through the roots because they need to make sure they have all of that nitrogen because it's really important for growth. Decomposers, if you remember, um, our examples are fungi and bacteria. They were part of the carbon cycle and that's how sugars and carbon manage to get from the dead animals and plants back into the soil and then is released or is released as carbon dioxide as well through respiration. They help to start this process off of the nitrogen being broken back down from dead animals and plants. So the proteins in animals and plants when they die and also the urea, which is partly broken down proteins that's found in waste. So feces and urine. When all of that is landing on the ground, landing on the soil, the decomposers start breaking that down and they start breaking those amino acids and proteins down into ammonia. We're going to see how that nitrogen compound then in the soil can then be brought back and used by the plants through the process of the nitrogen cycle. So the decomposers do the same thing they do here as they did in the carbon cycle. They're breaking down dead organic matter and they're turning, like they're starting that process of breaking down. And in this case, they increase the amount of ammonia in the soil, which is a nitrogen containing compound, nitrogen and hydrogen. Okay, so there are three stages to the nitrogen cycle itself, and each one uses a different type of bacteria to get the nitrogen from one compound to another, and then back into the atmosphere. So from the atmosphere, through organisms, and then back to the atmosphere again, because it is a cycle. And we need to know each stage and what the bacteria are called and what they do as part of that stage. So stage one is nitrogen fixing. So nitrogen fixing bacteria do what they say. They can take nitrogen out of the atmosphere and fix it, for want of a better word, trap it into ammonia. So they are taking that unreactive nitrogen from the atmosphere and because of their processing 
and their molecular abilities because they are bacteria and not animals or plants. They're prokaryotes. They have a different way of working and they can take the unreactive nitrogen, react it and create ammonia NH3, which can then be released into the soil. So this is why they are called nitrogen fixing bacteria, because they fix, which means they take or they trap the nitrogen from the atmosphere. Some of these bacteria just live in the soil and some of these bacteria can be found actually living inside the roots of certain plants. OK, so some examples are peas, beans and clover. These are some plants we call legumes and they have these special nitrogen fixing bacteria living in their roots to help them grow in soils where there isn't a lot of nitrogen. So that's a very good adaptation for the plant. So these bacteria, the nitrogen fixing bacteria, if we're summarising what they do, they increase the amount of nitrogen containing molecules in the soil or they increase the amount of ammonia in the soil. There is another way that nitrogen can get fixed into the soil, but it involves lightning, not bacteria. So this is just done naturally when there are lightning storms, the lightning strikes and the energy of the lightning causes the nitrogen to react with oxygen in the atmosphere. And that creates the nitrates that then sort of fall down and dissolve in rain material, etc. And they can then be part of the soil. So that is another way that nitrogen can get fixed from the atmosphere into soil. But it doesn't involve bacteria, it's just a natural process that happens when lightning strikes. So stage two is nitrifying or nitrification. So plants can't absorb ammonia either. They can't actually use the ammonia straight from the soil, they can't absorb it into their roots. They need it to be converted into nitrates which they can absorb. So what does that is the nitrifying bacteria in the soil. They nitrify, they turn something into nitrate or a nitrogen containing compound. And so they take the ammonia and they convert it to nitrates, either NO2 or NO3, which they can then absorb. Once the plants absorb them, so absorb these nitrates, they will then use them to make proteins. And then those proteins, those amino acids and proteins are passed onto animals in the food chain. So that's how we get proteins and amino acids into the food chain. Plants absorb nitrates and if you remember I said they combine them with the glucose and the sugars they make from photosynthesis to make amino acids and then those proteins that are in the plants will get broken down and digested by animals who then absorb the amino acids, use them to build their own proteins and then if they're eaten by another animal they absorb their amino acids etc. And so that's how proteins and nitrogen gets into the food chain. Okay, so step three is denitrification. So for this to be a cycle, for it to have like nitrogen in the atmosphere going down into the soil through organisms, through plants, back to the soil, and then it's got to go back to the atmosphere again. So how do we do that? Otherwise it wouldn't be a cycle. It would just stop with um, dead animals and plants in the soil. So the nitrogen has to go back to the atmosphere and to do that there are some bacteria that live in the soil who are called denitrifying bacteria. So they are removing nitrogen from the soil. They're breaking ammonia or nitrates down and then they release that nitrogen back as gas into the atmosphere. These bacteria are special in a way because they can only do this or mostly only happens in anaerobic conditions. So when there's no oxygen. So it doesn't just happen all the time. There isn't just nitrogen being taken out of the soil all the time. Otherwise, there wouldn't be enough nitrogen um, in the soil available for plants. But if there is an anaerobic or waterlogged conditions like a bog or a flood happens and there's not enough oxygen in the soil, these bacteria will get to work and then they will start removing nitrogen from the soil. So why is this important? We talked about this in the decay video. So farmers who grow crops need to make sure that their soils have got all the nutrients in that the plants need to grow. And that includes lots of nitrogen. But if you grow plants in the field, they take the nitrogen from the soil, use it to make proteins and grow. And then when you chop that plant up and take it away, you've removed the nitrogen from that soil, that field, and you haven't put it back. So you need to think of, farmers need to think of ways to get the nitrogen back into the soil so that they can grow a new set of plants every year in their 
and make sure that they have enough nutrients to grow. So they can use compost and manure, like we said in the decay video. So taking animal waste or dead plant material, putting it on the soil and then letting the decomposers do the work. And then it will go into the nitrogen cycle and therefore nitrogen will be placed back into the soil. Or they can physically add chemical fertilizers. So they can spray chemicals that are dissolved in water. So literally nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, all of those minerals um, dissolved in water and they can spray it on or water it into the soil, into the field. So they can just physically put the elements, the kind of compounds with those minerals back into the soil. This can be a negative for the environment because these um, are very highly um, soluble, so they've dissolved in water already. And if they don't absorb into the soil straight away or if there's heavy rain, then they can run off of the fields and they can go into lakes, rivers, ponds, any kind of body of water nearby. They can run off, which you call, it's called runoff, and it can cause eutrophication, which we're going to cover in our kind of human impact video. But that's why sometimes um, these chemical fertilisers are seen as a negative impact. So using natural ones is slightly better. An option that doesn't involve either putting any kind of fertiliser on the soil is to rotate your crops. So if you have more than one field, if you're growing your main crop in one field, while the other field is, instead of having the other field empty or not using it, grow a crop like peas or beans or clover in that field that have those nitrogen fixing bacteria in the roots and then that will put the nitrogen back into that field and then when your crops are done you swap so you would dig up all the peas and you would grow peas in the other field once you've taken your potatoes or whatever it is out of that field so then the nutrients will go back into there and then you rotate around so every time you've grown a crop and removed it because you've harvested it you plant a plant that has these nitrogen fixing bacteria in the roots to get the nitrogen back into the soil and then you swap. So that's one way of doing it without actually adding anything to the soil or fertilizers it's doing it in quite a natural way and it's called crop rotation and it's been done for hundreds and hundreds of years. And finally another thing that farmers need to do is in order to stop too much denitrification happening. So remember denitrification happens in anaerobic conditions so we need to make sure there's a lot of air in that soil. And so they plough it. So you can see these big teeth on the back of the tractor. That goes into the soil. It churns up all the soil, gets a load of air in there, making sure that there's a lot of drainage space for water to drain down and making sure there's lots of air gaps in the soil to make sure we don't get any anaerobic conditions. So there's no nitrogen being lost through denitrification. OK, so let's have a look at trying to summarise that. You'll see often in exams they might ask you to look at graphs and or diagrams like this and try to say what's happening. So let's just do a basic one and go through the steps. So nitrogen coming out of the atmosphere is done by nitrogen fixing bacteria. They take that nitrogen and they when they fix it, they turn it into ammonia, which is then present in the soil. We've already got amino acids in plants. And when they are eaten by animals, those amino acids go into the animals. They're broken down, digested, absorbed, and then used to make new amino acids and proteins. And so when those two sources of nitrogen, because they, they are sources of nitrogen, because amino acids contain nitrogen, when those animals die or when they produce urea and waste, they go into the soil. And it is then the decomposer's job to decay or decompose that dead material or waste material and break down those proteins to get the amino acids out. And they turn all of that urea and nitrogen waste into ammonia as well. So those are the two ways we get a store of ammonia. We get nitrogen into the soil in the first place, nitrogen fixing bacteria, take it out of the atmosphere, convert it to ammonia. Decomposers, including bacteria who are type, uh, example of decomposers, they break down the nitrogen in the amino acids in animals, and they also convert that into ammonia. So our plants can't use the ammonia, remember? So we need the nitrifying bacteria to nitrify our ammonia and to convert the ammonia into nitrates. I've got NO3 here, it can be NO2 as well, 
we don't need to know the formula, but nitrate, nitrates is fine. And then those nitrates are taken up by the plants, by active transport, by the roots. And then obviously they are used to make the amino acids that we've talked about that are in the plants. So this little bit is a cycle on its own, but we also have to remember we've got to get the nitrogen back to the atmosphere to complete the cycle. So those nitrates are broken down by denitrifying bacteria. They're taken, the nitrogen's taken away, taken out of the soil and put back into the atmosphere as nitrogen gas. Okay, so some little notes of things to remember. The denitrifying bacteria take place, do their job in anaerobic conditions. So when there's no oxygen, the nitrogen fixing bacteria, remember, they can be in the soil or they can just be in the roots of plants, including things like peas, beans and clover. Remember that there's another way that we can get the unreactive gas from the atmosphere into nitrates in the soil. There's another nitrogen fixing step, but it's involving lightning. So remember when lightning strikes, it reacts with the nitrogen and the oxygen in the air, and it creates the nitrates, which then fall normally dissolved in rain to the soil. So just a note that you can obviously fix nitrogen using lightning, but that's a natural process that happens. It doesn't involve bacteria. So only mention it if the question isn't specifically talking about bacteria and you need to mention the nitrogen fixing bacteria as well. So remember to summarize what each of the nitrogen, the, sorry, the bacteria does. So the nitrogen fixing bacteria takes nitrogen from the atmosphere and converts it to ammonia. That's what they do. Decomposes, the bacteria that are decomposes are breaking down amino acids and urea and also converting them to ammonia. And they're breaking it down from dead material. The nitrifying bacteria convert the ammonia to nitrates. And then the denitrifying bacteria release the nitrogen back into the atmosphere. So they break down nitrates and release the nitrogen back to the atmosphere or the air. Not to forget that this is very important to farmers and they need to think about how they can increase nitrogen in their soils so that their plants can grow. So the first thing they can do is they could fertilise with manure or compost, which will start the process of breakdown. So if they're adding manure or compost, they're basically adding this material here and then they will be broken down by decomposers and it will go through this stage of the nitrogen cycle to get more nitrates to be able to go into the plants. Or they can add fertiliser or chemical fertilisers with the nutrients in as chemicals. So they could literally directly add ammonia, for example, or add nitrate directly to the soil as a liquid form. Or they can rotate their crops so they can grow the plants here that contain the nitrogen fixing bacteria, grow them, get the nitrate and the nitrogen fixed into the soil and therefore made available to plants and then remove those plants once they've added the nitrogen to the soil and grow a different crop. That was a lot. It seems quite complicated, but there's only really three steps that you need to know. And then the other side of it with the decomposers and the animals is stuff we've already talked about and is very similar to the carbon cycle. So just know those three steps, what the bacteria are called and what they do. And that's the main things we need to learn from the nitrogen cycle. And just think about how that affects farmers and crops and how they need to kind of take steps to make sure that they keep as much nitrogen in the soil as possible. Ouch! This is when somebody is, I've had explained scratches.